So hello HCC family, uh, great to be with you again. Uh, this um, is going to be our first uh, of our video cast series where hopefully in the coming weeks uh, we get a chance to get to know some different people in our HCC family. So we've got the lovely uh, Dave and Jeanette with us. Uh, Hopefully this is going to be a brief video, although we have got Jeanette here with us, so we don't know exactly how that's going to go. Um, apologies, I still can't... I had a look through my wardrobe this morning, and actually I've realised all my jumpers and t-shirts are either white, black or grey, or... So I need to obviously uh, get on eBay, as we've got a bit of time on our hands, uh, and order a yellow jumper or something, to have a bit of brightness to your day. Uh, but hopefully you find this encouraging. We're going to, like I said, hopefully be putting out a video every day just to keep us all connected and to keep us praying and keep us focused on God. So, this is Dave and Jeanette. Uh, I'm glad we got hold of them because Dave, I think, is going to be isolating from the sort of weekend because he's very old. Um, shh, don't tell anyone. Hey, he doesn't look it. Um, but we just want to find out a bit about you guys. So, um, Jeanette, tell me a little bit about you and Dave. Dave and I um, have been married for 43 years. We have two wonderful daughters, Natalie and Hannah, and Natalie is with YWAM in Kona in Hawaii on a mission field, and Hannah is a qualified midwife. Um, we have attended the HCC church for nearly 30 years now, and we live in Cricklade, but we love to come and worship here in Highworth. Come on. Brilliant. And Dave, you um, 43 years, did you say? Um, yeah, obviously right. you fell in love at some point. When did you guys meet? Keep it um, safe. Children may be watching. But, um... <laughs> well, I was in the Air Force at the time, and in the uh, mid-70s, I was posted to uh, Royal Air Force Station Wildenrath in Germany. Jeanette at the time was working for the NAFI, which is the forces shop. Uh, and one day, um, Jeanette's friend, who had a boyfriend who was in the Air Force, said, would you come over because there's a dance or some event going off? And we met there and uh, later fell in love. And um, that was um, the mid-70s. So that's a long time ago, isn't it? So it's just been <laughs> oh, nearly 50 wonderful years. Wonderful ever since. It has. Fantastic. It's been great. We've been through a lot, haven't we? Yeah. Had, had a lot of adventures, and now the Lord's got something more for us. Amen. Brilliant. We're going to get Aioli in the back shot there. Give us a wave, Aioli. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, so, we all, I've, I've known you guys for just over eight years. We've done a lot of God stuff together, So, and I know your people who've got serious faith, in okay. the best sense of that. When did Jesus sort of shift from being a good belief to actually being something that sort of in a sense dominated your life and was a thing you were living for? I think in the mid 80s um, we were living in Borden in Hampshire and we believed in God obviously um, but it went deeper. It's, we wanted to know God deeper, we felt he was pulling us into something more special and the way we try to speak with our children and bring them up. We were more intentional than we've ever been and we have, we feel that we are going deeper and deeper each day. Mm. We've been very blessed to do the things we're doing. We serve God well, I hope, um, and we've served him in many ways and we are serving him today. Through this uncertainty, we still want to serve the Lord in the best way we could possibly can. Brilliant. And so it was a few years ago now, so I think I'm, I'm trying to think, it's probably about four or five, where, yeah, it must have been at least five, where uh, we as a family were living in the retreat, and you came around to see me, and I remember sitting in our kitchen, and here you are, Dave, about to retire, but you tell me something that most people don't normally talk about when they retire. Most people are thinking, I'll go and play some golf, read the paper. What was it you wanted to do as you retired? Well... We always felt that the Lord was going to call us into something. We didn't know what that looked like. And uh, when we retired, we were both available then to do what God wanted us to do. So we were only being obedient. That's how we saw it. And um, David and Amy Lancaster happened to visit with us. And I was struck by their ministry in Jackson in Mississippi. And 
I felt the Lord say to me, we should go and visit. Um, so we did. We went out for a couple of weeks to Mississippi. Uh, we liked it. We uh, got on well with everyone. We, it was very challenging. So we then decided to go to Harvest School to learn something about what it means to be a mission into a, cult a culture that's alien to you. And uh, whilst the Americans speak English, the culture is <laughs> alien. Yeah. So it was totally different. And so we, we, we decided to commit ourselves to two years as missionaries and pastors in Jackson, Mississippi with We Will Go Ministries. And that's, that, that was a, you know, what we felt the Lord was leading us into. And it was an amazing time as well, wasn't it? It was. It was so very challenging, uh, but very rewarding, okay. seeing people's lives change, or even just seeing attitudes change, yeah. from being very insular and, uh, and um, acquisitive to actually um, wanting to go and get an education, yeah. or wanting to actually go out and work rather than rely on uh, charity and, um, and sec social security. Yeah. It was great to see people's lives changed. I think one of my favourite things I can remember uh, Dave saying to me when you'd been there, you'd been there maybe a couple of months and Dave was working with a bunch of young people who were coming in after school and playing basketball and the sort of gang culture, the very much sort of macho thing, there's a lot of disrespect and you were telling me how you found it really hard, mm. there was uh, no honour. Um, all of that thing out the window and then Dave said something I thought was stunning he said and I've realized I need to change uh, and I love that because that's the gospel it's always moving towards people it's mm. not saying you've got to change and so brilliant things like that Jeanette what what do you guys feel God's saying at the moment then we're in a crazy time first of all I have to say we're totally at peace come on we are at the other end of the age scale. <laughs> well, we're not fearful. <laughs> Even though I have the remarks from my wonderful leader Just about keep her what I look like. <laughs> but This isn't her best jumper. She was very <laughs> upset that I didn't warn her about this today. So I'm wearing my old jumper. <laughs> but we are totally at peace. We know we've got an amazing God who cares about us. And if God takes us away tomorrow, we know where we're going. Um, mm. I think it's a time of uncertainty and a lot of fear is out there but I have to say what a time mm. what a time this is the time that we've been waiting for a time that we have such an opportunity mm. to share about our amazing father in heaven yeah. he is just an amazing God we don't understand a lot of things a lot of the time in the time I've done pastoral work I've come across a lot of different people. I don't have the answer all the time, but I know my God does, and I have to just trust in Him. And this is a time of trust for me, hope, and a time of being able to take the most of opportunities that I've put in front of us, that God can show me through wisdom and discernment what to say to them, how to listen to them, and most of them want just to be listened to. So, yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited that I can share about my God. Mm. And this is a good time. It's not a time just to be fearful, but it can. you can flip it and you can change it into an amazing time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic opportunity. And it's not about us delight, delighting in the problems, that's not what Jeanette's saying. No. It's actually where that veil's gone away for people because there wasn't any, ever any control. Um, life was always fragile. We always have all lived in a fallen world. And at the moment, um, probably chat about it later, but um, we've been, uh, there's been a queue of people for the chemist because they can only let one person at a time. And a bunch of us, someone else, I don't know who was in the bridge this morning, thought, Let's go and give them teas and coffees. And we're just being there and like people just start sharing. And like one lady was just in tears, was just talking to her. Because that stuff's there and what an opportunity. Mm. We've got hope. So Dave's going to pray for us all. Because it's okay, you know, at the moment you might be feeling fine. You might be really panicking. And do you know what? Jesus is there for all of us. Yeah? The, the all he requires of all of us is to keep our eyes on him. Yeah? And, and, and if we're fearful and put our eyes on him, it's okay. And so I know for all of us, there's a lot of uncertainty. There's a lot of sense of, you know, I'm, I was chatting to Sally this morning. We're going, we're planning this in July. I don't know if we're going to do that. We just don't know. 
but there's a God on the throne. Amen. And so Dave's going to pray for us all. Um, and I really encourage you, I mean, if you're sat in your lounge, if you're wherever you are at the traffic lights, because they're taking a long time, uh, keep your eyes open. But um, let's really receive. Yeah, it, we're not just wanting to pray just to sort of, uh, as a, some sort of little epilogue, but uh, actually believing that right now, God can encourage you, God can put faith in your heart, and blow away all the lies of the enemy. That's right. Go for it, Dave. Yeah, come Father on. God, I just, I come before you in all humility, Lord. And I, not in fear, Lord. I have no fear because you promised that you would be in everything. That you would never leave us or forsake us. So Father, I lift up all my brothers and sisters in Christ. Especially those who are suffering or are not well at the moment. I lift up this great nation, this once Christian nation to you, Lord. And I pray that they might come back to you. That may, they might know your presence in whatever they do. And Father... I just pray for each and every one in our church that they may feel closer to you today. Yeah, come on. Please in Jesus' on. name, yeah. amen. 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 And uh, to finally, a big air hug from uh, Jeanette. Mm. Come I'm on. not allowed to hurt anybody. <laughs> Must I'll be very, very hard for Jeanette. So hard. Hello. Uh, love you all. Like I say, keep in touch. Just to say, I'm an awesome, but uh, I'm sure I know Dave and Jeanette are two people that, um, if you're just feeling a bit down, a bit discouraged, you just need someone to pray, just give them a bell. Um, uh, we're, 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 this is our time to be the whole church uh, more than ever. Uh, so blessings to you and I'll speak to you tomorrow. Send you God lots bless. of love. Bye. Bye. Do an American little clap ourselves. Yeah. You were fantastic. And give Mike a clap Absolutely for being so quiet. Yeah. Didn't even know he was there. Yeah.